Good morning, church, and happy new year. I hope that everyone has had a great Christmas and hopefully a restful time, able to get time with uh, friends and family and hopefully some good food. Um, this, is, uh, this is our New Year's message for the beginning of 2022. So welcome, everyone, to the first message of 2022. Uh, <clears throat> last year, um, we, uh, we, our New Year's message, we kind of talked about l- looking at the next 10 years and that there was going to be a supernatural season of favor and grace for us to look and to make the adjustments as we looked at who God wanted us to be and how he wanted us to be for the next 10 years. And that was true for us as individuals and us as families and local churches, but also for us as, as a large church, uh, for, for, the, for the large All Nations Church. And what a year it has been. It's been uh, a year filled with opportunities and a year filled with challenges. Uh, there's been some wonderful things. There's been challenging things for us all, I'm sure. Um, but I, in it all, we've known the grace and the favor of God and the loving kindness of God to cover all of us and to be the context in which we operate, which I think has been wonderful. Um, this last year, we've been able to give a lot of our attention to Big Church, which was in response to the prophetic word that God had given to us sometime uh, a little while ago, and was to give our attention to Big Church, and that we had planted out, and that a lot of our attention had gone on to the plants, which was good and right, but that now we were to also give our attention to Big Church. And it's in response also to the prophetic word that God gave to us many years ago, when we were talking about how we were going to plant, um, whether or not we wanted to be one large church with all the things that go with large church and all the worship and all the demographic specific uh, initiatives and all the 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 uh, reputation in the community the presence in the community in the city or whether or not we were meant to plant local churches and God said that to us and I hope this isn't new to you but that he wanted us to do both simultaneously and so we've been that's what we've been endeavoring as a leadership team to do um and so when it came to, to giving some of our attention to big church this last year, as I trust you know, we have been able to finally develop our vision and mission and value statements and also our org chart. Um, I'm just going to read the vision and mission to you again. Uh, this is the result of many people's work. Um, but our vision as All Nations Church is that we are a people of all nations transformed by the love of Jesus, bringing him to every street every community, and every area of life. And that our mission is to help people know God and discover who they are created to be, to grow in maturity with God and each other, to go into the world as ambassadors of God's love, and to demonstrate his kingdom together. And so hopefully you've seen these little uh, cards that are around. If not, I'm sure that you'll be able to get one soon. I think Greg might have emailed them all out to us. And it also has on the back of it, it has our values. And I'm just going to quickly, I won't read all the, the, all the values, just the first little bit. But uh, these sorts of things are exciting. It says, Jesus is our passion. Kingdom is our culture. Worship is our lifestyle. Generosity is our privilege. Excellence is our spirit. Honor is our hallmark. Serving is our way, truth is our compass, hope is our song, and family is our heart. And I think that's wonderful. And we have embarked upon, as I'm sure you know, a teaching series that is that springboards off of each one of these values. And the regional leadership team have been moving around the local churches to minister on, on each one of these, and we're going to continue to do that in the new year. We've also taken some time to strengthen our nets, Um, Even in the midst of all of the COVID restrictions, being able to strengthen our evangelistic net, the the, the net that that brings people from the world in. Um, We've been able to do a uh, successful farm school that brought in a number of people, um, a fall festival, and even Bethlehem Live we were able to do this year, despite all of the COVID restrictions. And despite all of the restrictions and the uncertainties, uh, we were able to welcome nearly a 1,000 people here at Ashfield uh, as an effort from all of us and from all the churches. And it was great to see so many people, so many volunteers um, from, from all the churches, and also all the churches covering it in prayer and, uh, and, and, 
uh, helping to serve us in that way as well. Um, we had nearly a thousand people come through the property over two nights and from the data that we collect from people, 70% uh, of them did not have a connection to a church, which I think is wonderful for so many people to be able to be, be presented the gospel like that. And we had some tremendous uh, conversations with people uh, at the end of it all. For many of them, it was their first time hearing or seeing uh, a go the gospel presentation, hearing the story of Jesus. Um, and for, for, for everybody else, it was a fresh time and a real moving experience. So again, thank you to everybody who helped with that. Uh, it's been a tremendous, a tremendous experience. We were able to see um, uh, in our Christmas service, we did Christmas services together all in one go. And because of that, we've seen some salvations, which has been outstanding. And now in the new year, in the next few weeks, a few weeks away from now, we're going to launch again our Alpha Online. Uh, we did this at the beginning of this year past, and it was a tremendous success. And I think we saw 10 people give their lives to the Lord, and we we're about to launch it again in a few weeks. And so if you have somebody, uh, whether they were connected through the Christmas stuff that we did, or just friends or family that are curious about, uh, about Jesus and who he is, then Alpha is a tremendous uh, way for them to be introduced to who he is. So we want to encourage you um, to think about that. Uh, because of our vision and mission and values that we've been able to identify, uh, we've been able to identify now as an organization as well what we should be putting our time to and our resources to as a church, organizing our staff and volunteers and leaders and resources in light of our vision and mission, which is wonderful. Um, so that everything gets sort of aligned and then streamlined, which, is, which has been great. Um, we, uh, we've been able to streamline and strengthen our systems of communication and organization. You know, that's my strength. So I, you know, I take all the credit for that. No, I don't. That's mostly been Greg and Naris and Beth, uh, have done a fantastic job. Um, we've been able to inaugurate some things like planning center and Leapsum, and, uh, there's more to come. And I'm also excited that this obviously isn't a surprise, but we are able now, local churches are all back. Everyone's meeting. Um, I hope that we are able to continue. I know there's other variables and variants uh, out there as well, but I'm, uh, we're hoping and praying that we'll be able to continue to meet together. And it's been so great for the churches to be able to be back in person, to be back together. So grateful that Central was finally able to locate uh, a, a place to meet. Um, and same with Gatineau and Orleans building opened up. And uh, we've been able to continue meeting in Carlton Place, which has been wonderful. Um, we've been able to use our facilities to help serve some of the other churches in the area as well so that they have places to come and meet. And that's been excellent. Um, so this is, that, that's the, the, you know, just some of the, the year in a nutshell for us as a as, as big church. And it's been, a, like I said, a tremendous year. And I'm looking forward to all that God has for us as, we, as he has helped position us for who, who and how he wants us to be as we go into the, uh, the coming decade. Um, with, that, with that said, before we talk about the future, I just want to talk one, just for one second. In Genesis chapter 1, and you've probably heard me say this before, but in Genesis chapter 1, you see God and he's creating the world. And it says, let God, uh, let there be light. And there was light. And then it says, and God saw, and God said that it was good. And then the next day, and at the end of it, it says, and God said that it was good. And then the next day, and the next day. And periodically, you, uh, at the end of every day, you see him pausing and he looks back and he praises and he declares it as good. And I've, God spoke to me when I read this one time, because that wouldn't be naturally my way of doing things. I, I would look and think, yeah, you know, I, I finished the first day. For me, I probably would have just kept going and not stopped and rested and not stopped and reflected um, and, and not stopped and praised. I probably would have kept moving. But God teaches us something about the rhythms and the economy of, of life that even though there was so much more in his heart to do, even though he was, there, there was so much more that he wanted to accomplish and he had the capacity and the ability to do it, he paused and he stopped and he looked back and he praised. He says, this is good. And that's what I want us to do, not just as an organization, but I trust for us as individuals and as families that just before we, we get to the new year, before we, we become so future focused, which I think is good and right, but that we pause 
And sure, we may not have gotten all the things done that we wanted to get accomplished. Sure, there's more on our heart. There's more in our heart to grow as individuals. There's more in our heart to grow as families, as local churches, and as, as, a, as a big church. There's so much more that we know that we can do. But before we give our time and our attention and our resources and our energy to that, I just want us to take some time over this next week and let's just give thanks to God. Let's just give thanks God for each, let's just give thanks to God for each other. Let's give thanks to God for all that he's done and how he's brought us through these last few years, but especially, especially this last year. Um, he is, he's wonderful and he's magnificent and he's been doing tremendous things among us. And so let's pause and let's look and let's call what God has done as good and let's praise him for it. Um, and then, as we, as we do so, then our attention turns to the future. And we realize something. We realize that there's, that there's purpose ahead of us. We realize that, there's, that the, our destiny is ahead of us, beckoning us in to the purpose of God and to, to take the land and to possess the land. And a scripture that uh, I, I read recently um, was in Numbers 13.30, and it's in the context of what the, the scripture that we've been looking at this entire year about crossing the Jordan, and you know, you and all these people arise and move forward into the land. And, and we've been reading it out of Joshua, but in Numbers 13.30, um, it, it just says this at the beginning. It says, but Caleb quieted the people before Moses. He's like, shh. And he said this, let us go up at once and occupy the land. For we are well able to overcome it. And this idea of occupying, the word means to possess and to cause to increase. And Caleb looked and said, we are well able to do this, to, to take the land. And I believe that that's something that God's going to help us to lay hold of over these next 10 years, is what it means for us to not just have the victory um, and, and not just take the land, but to possess the land. And you can see in the picture of the story that's given to us in Scripture that the Israelites were set free, and they were set free from captivity, and they were set free from Egypt, and they were set free from bondage. And, 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 that, and it's wonderful. And for us, that, that, that's a point of our salvation. And it's, and it's wonderful to celebrate our salvation, to celebrate what God has done and what he's removed us out of and what he's forgiven us from. And we're taken fully out of the kingdom of darkness. And it's, it's wonderful and it's magnificent and it's beautiful, but it doesn't stop there. It didn't stop there for them. You can, you can imagine how, how strange it would have been for them just to, to celebrate, as I'm sure they did, their freedom. To celebrate and think, this is so great that we're not in Egypt any longer. We're not under slavery any longer. But God didn't just simply bring them out. He wanted to bring them in. And I believe that there's my, many Christians who, who uh, have not yet fully realized that, that the goal of Christ's coming wasn't just to bring them out of something. And it wasn't just to set them free from something, but it's to set us free to something. It's, just, it's, just, it's so that we can move into the purpose that God has. And I believe that um, that's one of the things that God saved us from, is lost from lostness to purpose. And I think one of the things that... God is uh, allowing all of the strange and uh, the difficulties of all of COVID and all of its related stuff and everything that's been going on in the social media and that right now is, is many men and many women have found that they have lost their sense of purpose. And I believe God wants to restore that to us. God wants to restore this, the, the sent nature to the church, that we are sent to do something, that there's a purpose for us, that all of us, every man, woman, and child who's listening to this has a God-ordained destiny, that he has a purpose for us, that he's not just set us free from something, but that he's calling us into something. And this is why Paul says, and I'm going to read this to you in, uh, in the Bible. He says this. He says, not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect or mature. He says, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet having taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And he says this, all of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too, God will make clear to you. 
it's so funny the way Paul fi- finishes that. It's the, it's the confidence of Paul uh, to say, if anyone thinks differently about this, you're wrong. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He said, and don't worry, God will show it to you. And he, he doesn't even try to, to re-articulate it. He just says, God will show it to you. But what he's saying is this. Not that I've been made perfect, but he says, not that I, I have all this yet, but I'm forgetting what is behind and I'm straining forward to what is ahead. He says, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. That he has taken hold of us, and that's true for everyone here, that God himself, through Christ, has taken hold of us. He's taken hold of our life, and he's lifted us out of something. But he says, there is a that for which he took hold of me. There's a purpose. And I believe that that's something that God is restoring to the body of Christ right now, in not just us, but around the world, is the, the purpose for which he's gotten a hold of us, the purpose for which the body of Christ is in the earth, the pur- purpose for which he has gathered us. And to say, you're not just gathered to come and have, have meetings, though those are wonderful, to have times of worship, though those are wonderful, and to gather on Sundays or midweek, though those are wonderful, those, those I trust are life-giving, but that that's not actually the purpose, that, that the purpose is for us to be filled with him and then, uh, and then sent to be demonstrators of who he is. And I believe God is restoring that to us. I believe that, like it says in Esther, even in the midst of these very strange and very challenging times for everyone, that it is for such a time as this that we're here. It's for such a time as, th- it's for such a time as this that the church was born. It's for such a time as this, as we find ourselves in the neighborhoods and in the communities and in the local church settings, it's, it's for such a time as this, that none of this surprised God. And for such a time as this, uh, that, that we are positioned to be a men and women who in the church together move the kingdom of God forward and that we give ourselves not just to what we've come out of, but we give ourselves now to what we're going into. And I think it's wonderful. All right, um, a couple of things just to just to mention for us. Um, I believe that this year, and we'll talk about this, you know, a little bit much later in the year. But I believe that one of the things that this year is uh, going to be about is, uh, as I prayed about it, I was praying about 2022, and I just said, God, what is it? What is your heart for us at All Nations for this next year? What is it that we should be giving ourselves to? What would you like us to give our attention to? And I was praying about it, and I was meditating on it, and then suddenly I just, I just saw it, uh, and it was, uh, and it, it was cheesy, and I, I honestly, I argued with God a little bit about it. I was like, "That's, uh, that's, uh, you sure that's? Can't you give me something deep? Can't you give me a deep scripture? Can't you give me something from the Psalms? Maybe you know how much I love the Psalms." And it was nope. And all I saw was 2022, but the the the, the last two was spelt T W O, so it was 2022. And I said, God, what does that mean? And then God said, and this is the cheesy part, he said, time with others. He says, that's what it means. It means you're to give yourselves to time with others. And there's going to be various ways that we can do that. There's going to be various ways that we can do that just out of our own initiative, but also we'll help try to provide effective and intentional ways for us to have time with others others. And I believe that's going to be a hallmark of what we give ourselves to in, uh, as, as, a, as a big church, as local churches, but also as individuals and as families that we prioritize. We raise right to the top of the priority in, in, in our lives and how we schedule our, our lives. The, th- the things that we give attention to is just simply our, is time with others. Um, we're going to look at, you know, later in the year what some of that means. We're going to talk about discipleship. We're going to be looking to do some leadership training. Um, and I, I think it's going to be wonderful. There's lots of other things that, that we, we, we're looking at for the new year. We want to, um, we want to move our online meeting to 7 p.m. on a Sunday, which is going to give the people who run that meeting an opportunity to be in local church that are actually meeting, but it's also going to give opportunity for those of us who are in the Sunday morning meetings to actually have, uh, especially those of us who serve in kids' work or who are serving uh, in other capacities and aren't able to catch everything, for us to be able to provide something that they're able to have a look at as well and something for us to do together. There's a few other things that are coming down the pipeline, but all in all, I'm excited. I'm excited for us to be able to find ways to spend time with others, and I think it's going to be, uh, I think this is going to be be our best year yet. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited that God is already in 
2022, and he is calling us forward into his purpose. And he's saying, come on, church, come and take the land. Let's possess it. Let's occupy it. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope you still have a few days of uh, relaxation left before the kids go back to school or before you go back to work. Uh, and in the meantime, let's get time with each other and let's make that a hallmark of our intention over this coming year. Love you, church, and we'll see you in 2022.